Hey everyone, welcome back to our next Smart Street Showcase. If you're new here, I'm your host, Nate Montgomery. And in this series, we share the ways that customers are using our platform based on the work our onboarding team has done. In today's episode, we're taking a look at how you can use Smart Suite as a project management tool, but also be able to track the capacity and workload of your team that's working on the tasks associated with those projects. This is more of an intermediate video. So if you're fairly new to the platform, I'll link some getting started resources below. But if you're familiar with the no code space and are looking for a product to use for your team, you're in the right place. Now keep in mind that this solution built is just for one workflow and one process, but SmartSuite's flexible structure as a relational database allows you to map the design to your specific needs. Without further ado, let's dive right in. We're back inside of our Smart Suite homepage. We are gonna be looking at this project capacity tracker solution. You can easily start with a template, go to our showcases and download any of these templates that I talked about in past videos or the one I'm looking at today. We'll start off in the data schema widget to get some context on the solution design. We have projects which have a variable interval. They're linked to tasks, which is the work being done by a specific team member, and they are also happening in a certain sprint. We also have the weekly capacities, which takes a look at the work a team member is doing inside of a certain sprint, so we can understand how much capacity and utilization that specific team member has with regard to one of the sprints. Inside of this projects app, we're able to see all of our projects, the status they're in, who's the product manager, the priority, the type of project, the due date, some other budget related fields that are going to be summing up information at the task level. Let's go ahead and create a new project just to show some functionality. First thing you can do is type in a project title. We're able to assign a priority, a due date for the project, and a type. When I save this project, because the type is marketing, it's going to go ahead and create tasks associated with that project that happen for a marketing project. If I scroll down to our new marketing project, we can see that three tasks were created with due date dependent on that project with the description here. You can see that these tasks are unassigned. That can be baked into the automation. But if you're a manager, you might want to assign tasks for a project based on a team's workload for that week or feature week. In order to do that, you can go to the projects and inside of a task assignment dashboard, you're able to see team utilization for this week in this bar chart on the left. Each one of these bars shows how utilized each team member is the current week. As we can see, Tara is a little overutilized, whereas John, Stoyan, maybe Brian are a little less utilized. And if we look over to this team's task load, we can see how many tasks each one of our team members is working on and have completed. Looks like these bottom two team members have less in their queue and they're being less utilized. Let's go ahead and assign these tasks to those team members. We can do so directly inside of this dashboard by clicking here. We can see now that the task working on count has gone up to four for John. And as John starts tracking time instead of a time tracking log inside of the tasks, so actually completing the work, this utilization rate will go up as the amount of time he spends comes closer to the amount of time we've allocated for him this week. Moving over to tasks, this is where a lot of the work is going to be done. You can easily add on a filter where the assigned to is exactly current user. So each individual member can sign into tasks, see all the tasks they're working on and be able to track time directly where the, this work is happening. It's easy as starting the timer, which brings up this time tracking modal where they can go into whatever app they're working in, come back, stop the time, and it will automatically be tracked inside of this time log here. In our next app here, we have sprints. Sprints represent a fixed interval of work that needs to happen. So for each task, we have a sprint assigned of when we're going to complete it. Now the tasks already have a due date. So using an automation, anytime a task is created that has a due date, it's going to be automatically assigned to its relevant sprint. So you don't need to worry about linking a sprint to a task. If I go ahead and create a task with a due date and save it, we can already see that the task has been associated with this week 19 sprint. We can go ahead and jump back to the project dashboard so we can see the total workload of our teammates before we assign it to the right person. Inside of sprints, we're also able to see the completed task and account field and the open tasks that still need to be worked on within that sprint. Opening up a record, we're able to see fields of information displayed on this page layout, including our tasks that are happening in the sprint 
the status of them, the due date, time tracked for this task, who's the owner, and then the project associated with it. Moving on to weekly capacities, we have an automation set up to create a weekly record for each team member. In our weekly capacities app, it represents a week assigned to a team member, comparing how much time we have allocated for that team member and how much time they've worked on tasks during that week. As a result of this, we get the utilization rate based on a formula comparing these two values. And we have a spotlight that highlights the utilization rate when it reaches over 100%, which means we're over allocating time to that person that week. We're able to write notes about our weekly capacity records to have a smart dog field. Moving over to our other view types, we can also see the team's utilization during this week. We can see it on a monthly basis. So the average utilization rate for each team member for this month, and you can even do so on a, a larger time frame as well. Quickly diving over to the team, we have a listing of our team members, their hourly rate, which is being used to calculate how much we've spent on the projects and then compare them to the budget. And then we also have tasks working on and total time tracked throughout all of their tasks. Moving back over to our dashboard, inside of a project, we're able to see a good overview of not just the utilization for this week, but also we can see how much budget we have remaining for each project compared to how much we've spent. So as the team tracks time towards tasks, how we are looking with regards to how much budget we have for each project. We can also see with comparison widgets, how many projects we've completed this month, tasks we've completed this month, and we're able to see the upcoming task we have for this sprint sorted by the due date, as well as all the active projects going on. Overall, this solution not only allows you to manage the projects and tasks associated with those projects, but it also helps you decide how you want to assign the work of those tasks and this project to your team based on the sprints those tasks need to be completed and how much utilization your team already has from the other tasks assigned to them. And that wraps up this Smart Suite Showcase. Hopefully you got some insight on how you can use our platform to manage projects and the capacity and workload of your team. If you have any questions, comments, requests for a future showcase, you can leave those in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer. If you're looking to implement a solution for your team and wanna see your custom processes and workflows, feel free to reach out to our team to help get started. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.